I made this recording on the afternoon of June 20th, 2020, in the woods by the bank of the Gartamp River in the Nouvelle Aquitaine region of France. I chose to record this poem, Weeds, to accompany the exhibition of Simone Fettel because I wanted to contribute to her sculptural work the description of a long duration of making by women. The poem documents the excavation of the Natufian culture in Palestine by the archaeologist Dorothy Garrod in the 1930s. So this is about the uncovering of a 10,000-year-old history by one of the first women archaeologists. And it is about a non-hierarchical culture of ritual, healing, play, feasting, growing, and celebration, where women were makers and shamans. My own connection to the Natufian culture is by means of this river, the Gartempe, that accompanies the recording. Dorothy Garrod retired to this region of France in the 1950s to a village called Angle sur Anglin. Here, with two other women on the banks of the Gartempe River, she excavated a cave known to locals as the Rocheau Sorciere, the Witch's Rock, uncovering a series of relief carvings in the stone walls. These carvings are of the same epoch as the paintings in Lascaux Caves. But I had first heard of Dor Dorothy Garrod before I arrived in France 20 years ago because I saw in the mid-90s a small sculptural figure of two embracing lovers at the British Museum. The sculpture was attributed to the Natufian culture. This story of weeds figurines, flowers, archaeology, women's intelligence, and love was first written in 2017 when I set out to learn about the Natufians. It was commissioned by Omar Barada for Tamawuj, a publication of the Sharjah Biennial. Now its home is with the work of Simon Fatel. Weeds for the Natufians. This is about weeds, about the rise of weeds. From 10,000 to 8,000 before the current era. From 12,500 to 9,500 before Christ. As early as 13,000 years ago. From between 14,500 and 11,500 before the present, some 12,000 years ago, 15,000 to 11,600, in the 12th and 11th millennia BCE, at Jericho and Abu Harayra, at Wadi and Natuf in Jordan, in Palestine, in Israel, in what is now Syria, at Ain Malaha and Wadi Hama, from southern Turkey to Sinai. At Mount Carmel, Ain Malaha, Hayonin Cave, Wadi Hama, Nahal Oren, Rosh Zin, Rosh Horesha, Wadi Jedayid, Beida, Jericho, and Sukul Cave. Abu Harayra, from present-day Jaffa to Tyre, beneath oak and pistachio trees, evergreen and deciduous oaks. The vegetation is very diverse, with a prolific undergrowth of grasses, cypress and common myrtle, poplar and prune, artemisia and grasses, semi-desert with sagebrush, shrubs, bushes, and annuals, olive and pistachio, dense stands of wild grasses among trees, tamarisk and willow, in riverine and lacustrine areas, at least partly covered by marshes. Occasionally the steppe belts, 
dwarf shrubs and herbs, with low trees and shrubs, half are evergreen. Hedgehog, polecat, and badger. Commensurate sedentism of dogs and humans. A fox skull, a dagger, a spoon. Perforated teeth of foxes. Removal of teeth as an initiation rite. Decorated ostrich egg vessels. The presence of red ochre. The grinding of ochre in mortars. Earliest floral grave lining. Stems of sage, mint, and figwort. Spring flowering and strongly aromatic of aromatic fragrance and bright colors, a veneer of stems, leaves, and fruits, grasses, reeds, and sedges, common myrtle for its aromatic and therapeutic characteristics, 40-odd tortoise shells, red fox, beech marten, Eurasian badger, mongoose, partridge, and falcons, cup marks related to the butchery process. They extracted marrow from long bones. They manufactured piercing implements from the tibia of gazelles, which may have been weaving implements. Their assemblage of grave goods was a form of curation. They ate fawns, left traces of gnawing, mortars, cups, and basins shell beads and stone beads, weaving and the use of flax, art objects and dentalia, 32 pieces of charcoal, nine dried figs burned in a fire, five seeds of a Judas tree, elaborate ceremonial life, functional elements used for weaving, elaborate seven-part funerary customs, as well as feasts. There is no mortuary evidence for hereditary social inequality. At Ain Malaha, an exquisite headdress made from hundreds of delicate tusk-shaped dentalium shells was found in a woman's burial, a woman's hand on a puppy, necklaces. They hunted gazelle and small game, both slow-moving and agile, such as hare and boar, fox and hare, such as goats and birds, by using nets and fire, and with the help of their dogs. They domesticated dogs, processed cereals and acorn. They were the first to do so, it is said. They built villages and granaries, round stone houses with vegetal roofs. They made middens where weeds grew, may have planted fig trees. They buried the dead with the bodies of their dogs. They treated the dogs as they treated their own dead. Their shamans were women. They made art. They ground seed. They decorated their stone mortars, which also were used as grave goods. The stone bowls in some graves may have served as cult objects. They carved enormous mortars from boulders. The obsidian of the bowls was imported. The interiors of their round, dry stone dwellings were daubed in white or red, including the paved floors. The Natufians invented the sickle, flint sickle blades hafted into bone or wooden handles. They were sedentary foragers, affluent foragers. At first they gathered wild grain, wild weed grasses, more than weed and barley. They ate mollusks. They intensified their care of wild cereals and nut crops. They intervened to enhance the growing conditions of barley, einkorn, and emmer wheat. 
almonds, pistachios, and acorns. A marker of intentional cultivation is the presence of weeds, a sudden rise in pollen of weed plants, fetch amidst barley. They may have planted barley and wheat, terraced the hillsides. They tended or planted lupin, gathered or cultivated. The idea that the Natufians were the world's first farmers remains controversial. Yet weeds developed in tandem with cultivation. Their sickle blades were polished by grass stems. They decorated sickle hafts. They harvested grains whilst green. They harvested and stored plant foods, maybe in sedge baskets. They managed plant habitats. They saved seeds. There was dramatic increase in the classic weeds. This suggests small-scale cultivation. Small-seeded legumes, small-seeded grasses, stony-seeded gromwells, the weeds that grow in tilled fields. Coinciding with these weedy plants are the first charred grains of morphologically domesticated rye. They established the first cemeteries in caves apart from their dwellings. They had held funerals, made bedrock mortars and cup marks. They feasted on gazelle at grave sites and buried the festal remains. They dried fish and meat. They perfected short blades and bladelets. Rats, mice, and sparrows flourished in their villages. The presence of arable weeds reflects increased sedentism. Dorothy Garrod identified the Natufian culture. While excavating Shukba near Jerusalem, during digs at Mount Carmel, Palestine, she coined the cultural label for the late Epipaleolithic Natufian culture, following her excavations at Es Skuhu and El Wad. Her discovery and definition of the Natufians, first at Suhukba Cave and later in El Wad Cave and Terrace, became one of the cornerstones for understanding the transition from foraging to farming in the Fertile Crescent. Trained at Oxford and by the Abbey Henri Broy in France, her Excavations at the cave sites in the Levant were conducted with almost exclusively women workers recruited from local villages in what was then Palestine. They began their excavations in 1928. The excavations in El Wad, Es Sukul, and at Tabun Caves were conducted from 1929 through 1934. Several skeletons bore body decorations. The remains of a 45-year-old woman were separate. She had bone spurs on her pelvis and spine, indicating she suffered physical ailments. Accompanying her burial are the remains of the tail bones from a cow, a wing bone from a golden eagle, a forearm of a boar, 50 tortoise carapace pieces, two marten skulls, pelvis of a leopard, and a fully articulated foot from another person. Male gazelle horns, a pointed bone tool and a round pebble, a fragment of a worn basalt bowl, seashells. Her body was held in place by ten large stones. She's intricately buried in a complicated position. Her legs splayed out and folded, unlike the other individuals. She was perhaps a shaman, or the grave could be showing the beginnings of social stratification. The Natufians lined graves 
with a soft mud veneer and then placed on the veneer a thick cover of fresh flowering plants in a fluorescence of symbolic activity, allowing soft, delicate plant tissues to leave their precise impressions. These plants flower in spring. Most have a strong aromatic fragrance. Some possess medical qualities. The green linings were thick and continuous. The impressions were formed before midsummer. Their superbly carved sculptures, animal figurines and jewelry. Their villages were excavated by women in Palestine. In the village at Hatula, on the western edge of the Sepala Hills, abundant cup marks in a large block of limestone. Seven cup marks. They always appear in groups, up to 30 on the same stone slab. The seven cup marks are surrounded by five or six very shallow depressions, 20 centimeters in diameter. The peculiar order of cup marks, the number seven involved, the proximity to the dwelling may suggest a game board. They decorated their bodies with beads. Using flint knives and chisels, they carved a figurine of a pig from limestone. They inscribed a human face on a pebble, a gazelle head made of bone, a kneeling gazelle figurine in limestone, a headless human figure in limestone, a basalt pestle with a phallic termination. An exceptional figurine was found at Ein Sakiri near Bethlehem, roughly 10 centimeters tall. It depicts two persons engaged in intercourse, two people embraced in a sensuous pose, two naked people wrapped up in each other. When you move it to look in different ways, the figurine changes. A limestone figurine with an owl at one end and a dog's head at the other. The term figurine should be defined. Enigmatic zoomorphic or anthropomorphic entities of any size. Anthropomorphic pebbles. Three-dimensional cylindrical to globular objects of transitional industry. On the stone head from Ein Malaha, Traces of the artist's tool marks are still visible. The eyes, formed by three concentric curving lines, dominate the lower portion of the face, which has been bisected by a broad horizontal band. The eyes are disproportionately large. The upper portion of the head is incised with diagonal lines, which may represent hair or ornamentation. The Ein Sakiri lover's figurine was found by a Bedouin in a cave near Bethlehem, was found by René Neville in a museum in Palestine. It was 1933. The Bedouin took the consul to the cave. The cave was a domestic site, not a burial place indicating that the calcite representation of entwined lovers on a rounded river stone was of quotidian significance. The tenderness of the embracing figures suggests this is love, suggests nothing about fertility. Neither facial features nor gender are determinable. When the figurine is turned in the hand, one end shows a penis, the other two breasts. From another view, a vagina is visible. The sculpture of the lovers is an act of love. It is the first kissing couple and the earliest uses of flowers. With crops came weeds, or from weeds, crops. And what is a flower? They went into the corn to kiss. Weeds and kissing go together. <laughs>